Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 or Windows 10 onto your external SSD like this one I have here which is from Samsung 750 EVO 500GB or maybe you have a flash drive, it's a SanDisk 64GB flash drive and I'm going to show you two ways to do it. So let me get right to it. Before we get started, let's look at the two methods that we're going to employ. Number one is where we install a fresh copy of Windows onto a new or external SSD or a flash drive. The second version or the second method will show you how to get your existing setup, like my, my current setup here, to get that exactly cloned onto an external disk such as an SSD or a flash drive if you have a large enough flash drive. Let's start with method one. Alright guys, to get started we need to go to rufus.ie which is the website here. I'll link it in the description for you to just click and download. Click on Rufus 3.18, that's at least the version at the time of recording the video. Open the tool, click on yet. Now that you have Rufus downloaded, you will see a list of disks here. You can see it only shows you your USB flash drive and not your USB SSDs. To change that, all we need to do is go to show advanced drive properties, click on list USB hard drives, a few seconds and now you can see it picked up my external hard drive which is a terabyte i got the flash drive which is a 64 gig sandisk and the 750 evo which is a 512 gig ssd from samsung so for this example you can use anything you want here i'm going to demo it on my 64 gig drive so click that then we need to select the iso now what you can do because we don't have windows downloaded is just click on here, click on download, and now then click on download. Now it will ask you what you want to download. So we will need Windows 11, continue, give it a few seconds. Then we will select the latest build, which is the 21H2 V1318. Let's see what build number we're running by typing WinWar on Windows. We're running build 22613. So there have been a few updates, but the latest available downloadable version is the 318. This is where the method 2 will come in. So method 1, we just hit continue. Select home pro edu, which means education, pro or home version of Windows. Select the language as English international, that's fine. Continue. You can change it if you need to. And here, if you have a download accelerator like I have here, which is the Internet Download Manager, then you might want to check this box that says download using a browser, which will let you use that download accelerator. If you don't, then hit download, but it will be slightly slower. Bear that in mind. I'm going to check it. Click download. You can see it quickly picked up. ISO, and now it's downloading. While that downloads, you can maybe grab a cup of coffee or something. And there you go, download finished. Now we jump back onto Rufus, switch this back to select, select the ISO that we just downloaded, Windows 11, and this is where the magic happens. Now, previously we already chose the disk, your SSD or your flash drive, I'm choosing the flash drive. Image option, I'm going to click on here and click on Windows to go. You can even do extended Windows 11 install if you don't have TPM or Secure Boot. I've made a video on it just up there for you to check it out. But we're gonna go with Windows to go and then leave everything else on pretty much normal settings. If you are targeting this OS for a system that is more than 15 years old, then you might want to switch this to MBR. But I don't think Windows 11 supports MBR, so this option will only pop up for Windows 10, so UEFI we go. Here you can name your drive, I'm going to call it Windows 11 Portable, and then everything else can be left to default. So I check everything again, then hit start, then I'm going to select the version I want to install, I want to install Windows 11 Pro. It will erase all the data on my device, I'm going to quickly go and check if the data is any useful. Yeah, I have all the backup. So I'm just going to press OK to wipe everything off the flash drive and boom, give it a few seconds, minutes or hours depending on your configuration. But uh, roughly speaking, it should be just a file copy from your laptop to your flash drive or an external SSD. With an external SSD, you can expect it to go a bit faster than this, but 
with flash drives you are limited with the write speed of a flash drive which is typically 20 to 30 megabytes per second while an ssd can be 300 or 400 megabytes per second we can monitor the transfer by opening our task manager and going to our usb disk we're writing at 3.8 megabytes a second we'll let it happen and be right back once it's done and there you go the process has completed now all we have to do is just reboot but i'll show you that after i show you the second method because the reboot method will stay exactly the same for both methods so i'm just going to close out of this and show you the second method first before we restart we can go and check everything is installed you can see there's even a users folder everything's good to go so for method two we would need a software called macrium reflect it is completely free to use for personal use. All you have to do is scroll down, go to this web page, link will be below. Click on download free. Then click on I need a personal free license. Click continue. And then the download will begin. Let that 5 megabyte download. Open the file once it's done. And then here it will say which folder it will download to. It will download the free version. Leave everything on default. Just make sure you go to options. Go to make sure it's 64-bit and reflect install only because if you need a recovery media then you would select PE components which will be a larger download but we only need reflect so I'm going to make sure it's selected and then hit download. Now it will take a while to download so I'm going to leave those both downloads going. Right so reflect just finished downloading with the installer that we had so it has just launched press next next again personal use hit this checkbox hit next i don't want to register next again desktop shortcut i don't need it you can leave it checked if you need one all right all we need to do is just hit finish and there you go now you'll get this screen now depending on your pc you might not see this many disks because i have a lot of disks connected to my system so you can see here this is our windows drive you can find it using the number of partitions method. So if you see four partitions like this, this is your Windows drive. And if we scroll down, we see the Samsung 960 Evo, which is a regular drive. And then we see our 64 gigabytes, which is 57 gigabytes usable GPT disk, which is our flash drive, which we used for installing Windows earlier in method one. But for this particular method, because we are already using 253 gigabytes of our SSD, we will use the method of cloning this disk to our external SSD so we can boot from it on any system as long as it has GPT enabled. Alright, so to do that, this is our target disk. Uh, this is the Samsung SSD 750 Evo. Right now it's full of data. What we're gonna do is gonna overwrite all of this. So remember that when you do this method, it will overwrite any data that we are transferring to the target disk. We'll go to our main Windows disk, click on clone this disk, and select the disk clone 2. Scroll down until we see our target disk. You can use the identifier, you can use the capacity to identify it. I have multiple 500 gig SSDs, so I'm going to use the identifier here, Samsung SSD 750. And this last four digits are your serial number. If you have similar drives, you can use these numbers to identify your disk. Click on that and hit finish. You don't need to click next. Once you hit finish, it'll warn you that C drive will be cloned without enabling BitLocker on the drive that is being cloned to. Please enable BitLocker app cloning. Press OK. And now uncheck this box that says save an XML backup definition file. We don't need that and then click on run this backup now. Press OK. And now you will see this warning that it will wipe everything from the disk that you are cloning to. So accept that warning, check the disk that that's the one you want to write to and hit continue. It will take a few hours once you hit continue depending on the disk speed. But if you have 250 gigabyte SSDs on both sides, for example, then it should take half an hour or so. So just hit continue, wait for the process to finish, and then I'll show you what to do when everything's done. I've already done the process, so I'm going to cancel it. All right, guys, to continue, I'm going to restart my laptop, and then I'll show you how to boot into the drive that you created. So let's go. And just right click your start button, restart. Now, depending on your model, you have to press a button on your keyboard. 
For most systems, it's F8, F11, F12. Sometimes it's F9. Now I'm going to press F2, which is default for BIOS on most laptops and desktops. So F2 is a safe bet. Then what you can do is override your boot from there and you can boot into your external disk as in USB or SSD. So to do that on ASUS you can just click on this boot menu button right here and you can see it's giving me an option to boot from the UEFI SanDisk one. If you plug in your SSD you will see an option here as well. I'm going to show you that as well. So booting into the SanDisk you can see we've got the ASUS logo which is a good sign. It started to load. It's going to install all the necessary drivers to get to the setup screen. It's going to restart your system again after installing all the necessary drivers. So you just follow the same procedure again. Spam F2 on your keyboard to get into BIOS. Then you look for the boot menu which is F8 in my case. And now you can see we've got a boot manager on there. So we'll just click on that. And Bushki, we are in. Windows 11 setup is good to go. You can follow the process as required. To boot from the SSD, you just press F2, press F8, select your SSD, press enter. And you won't even notice the difference if you boot on the same system. It will boot so fast and everything will look pretty much identical to how you have it set up at your main system. So yeah the files you left will be in the same place as your main computer and you're good to go as you can see no issues back to the desktop and that's it done and there you have it that's how you get windows up and running on an external disk whether it's a usb flash drive or an ssd and it might take a while to set it up at first but it's very handy when you're moving around and you need a portable OS to diagnose things or own operating system running everywhere you go. Anyway guys, smash the like button if this video helped you install Windows on external disks. Consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell just down there. Check out my other videos right up here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers!